Hey everybody, welcome back to another video. My name is Jake Whip, and today I'm going to be showcasing a preset that I made for DaVinci Resolve that allows you to create some really cool highlight effects. I built this so in my tutorials I can showcase what I'm currently working on. Like if I want to highlight a detail in the inspector, I can make it zoom up onto the screen or highlight a certain control I'm talking about. And it's a really flexible tool. You can do a lot with it and it really showcases the power of fusion inside of DaVinci Resolve. But to actually use this preset, you don't need to know anything about fusion. Everything can be done right on the edit page. And did I mention I'm giving it away for free? Check out the link in the description to download it. And if you want to leave a donation, that would be greatly appreciated so I can continue making stuff like this. So inside of DaVinci Resolve 18, if I go to my effects library, under generators, I have my highlight window effect right here. And that's a really nice thing about this. It's simply drag and drop. All you have to do to add it is simply click on it and drag it down above any clip. Now if I put my playhead over it, you can already see that it is going to be working. If I click on it, over in the inspector it's going to show us all of the controls. First up, at the top we have a preview mode, which is going to show us the area on our screen that it's actually going to select. If you click the drop down in the bottom left, you can change this to be fusion overlay. And now we can grab these on-screen controls to select the area that we want to highlight. I'm just going to move it up to the corners like that and then bring this one all the way down to the bottom, just like so. And once you have the area selected, just uncheck the preview mode and it's going to apply the highlight effect. Now let's move down to the next section, animation controls. And this is where it's going to get really cool. This first drop down menu has a ton of different options in it. There's focus, scale, scale and focus, center, and then center and focus. If we click on the focus one, you see it's just going to highlight this area and dim everything else behind it. We can control that down in the bottom here. Like we can change whether the background's blurred, uh, how much it's blurred, if the background is being dimmed at all, and then again, how much we want to dim it. And we can even change the saturation to take all the color out of the background as well. If we go back to animation, we can also change it to scale. And what that's going to do is scale it up to make it a little bit bigger. We can use the scale control here down at the bottom to change how much bigger it actually gets. And you'll notice as I change these controls, new controls will appear and other ones will be hidden. So this tool is only going to show you the controls that can actually be used to customize the image. So if I go to the pivot controls, I can change where it is scaling from. Right now it's scaling from the top right. But I could also change it so it scales just from the right. So that means it's going to set the pivot point to be right here. I could also change it so it scales from the top left. So it's going to set the pivot point to be right there and I can change it to all the different sides. And if I want to, I can change the pivot to be custom. And now it's going to add a custom pivot control that I can adjust in the middle here so I can change exactly where this window is pivoting from. Like I said, this has a ton of custom control. Coming back down to the animation controls, I can also set it to be scale and focus. So it combines the last two that we talked about, allowing it to scale up, but also blurring the background or dimming the background and whatever you want to set it to. And now the next one's really cool. This is the center one. It's going to take whatever you selected and it's going to move that to the center of the screen. And it still has that scale control so you can adjust how much it actually zooms in. But no matter how much of an area I select, it's still going to keep it perfectly centered. All right, and finally, the last one is center and focus. And as you can guess, it combines the center one and the focus one to blur the background or dim it. And below this control, we also have some more animation options. So in addition to being able to retime it just by dragging the fusion composition out to change the length of it, we can also toggle whether it animates in and out. So you can see right now it is doing the out animation, but if I uncheck the out box, it's no longer going to animate out. And I can do the same thing at the beginning too. You see it's animating in right now, but if I uncheck that, it's going to start at the centered position. I can also change the animation length. So right now, it's going to take 30 frames to move from its original point to the center of the screen. And then at the end, it's going to take 30 frames to move from the center of the screen back to the original point. Below that, we have a couple more controls, like the shadow controls. I can toggle whether or not the highlight window is actually casting a shadow. I really like doing it because it adds some depth and makes it look like it's in front of the object in the background and not just kind of blending in with it. But you can take that even further by changing the offset, softness, and even the intensity of the shadow. And finally, down at the bottom, we also have motion blur controls. So if I go to a frame that it's actually moving, I can turn on the motion blur and you see it's going to make it look a lot more natural. And the cool thing about this is this template is only going to render motion blur in the animation window. So in this case, the first 30 frames and the last 30 frames are going to be the only ones that it has motion blur on. So that way everything in between that is going to render a lot faster. Now I really like using this to, to bring something to the center of the screen. Like if I'm working on an expression or something uh, in the inspector, I like to bring it up to the middle because that way it's a lot easier to see and to show what I'm talking about. But we can also use this to highlight something. For example, if I'm talking about the size control, I can easily blow that up and bring it to the attention of the viewer. I'm going to use these selectors to select the size control and by default it's going to put it in the center of the screen, which I'm not going to do. 
I want to change the animation to be scale plus focus. And that's going to reveal the pivot controls like we had before. I'm going to set it to be right as the pivot point. And now when we play this, you can see it's going to scale it up and also blur the background. So I can just highlight this one control. And then what I can do is just shrink this fusion composition down. So that's only like two seconds long. Or I can change the animation. So let's say it takes 15 frames. And then this is a little bit shorter. So that way it scales up and scales down right away. Now, if you're having issues playing this back in real time, go up to playback, come down to run your cache and set it to be user. And you can see it's gonna draw a red line above it, which means it's gonna cache the effect. And once it's blue, that means that this section is saved into the memory. So it's gonna play back in pretty much real time. And if you're still having issues with that, what you can do is right click on the new render in place. Simply set it to be MP4, then click render. Once it's done with that, you will have a clip that's gonna play in real time. Well, I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, check out the link down below so you can get this product for free. If you make tutorials or any sort of content creation that includes a screen recording, it can really make your life a lot easier while also upping the production quality of your video. If you guys wanna learn more about how this template's actually made, I'll have a full breakdown in my Fusion course when that comes out. If you're interested in learning more details about that, also check out the link right down below. Please let me know if you wanna see more presets like this, and I'll see you guys in the next one.